What's up, Unlocking Your Inner Strength listeners? How would you like to know about the three types of days that you can use to maintain a healthy balance while still striving to be the best in the world at what you do? Well, I have good news for you. I've put together a special report showing you exactly how to do this. It's normally $45, but since you're a loyal listener to the show, you can get it for only $10 at unlockingyourinnerstrength.com forward slash time. You're listening to The Inner Strength Show. If you want to step into your greatness, you've come to the right place. Here is your host, the human strength expert, Kyle Newell. What's up, everybody? It's Kyle from Unlocking Your Inner Strength and the creator of Newell Strength. For episode number 61 this week, I have some cool stuff we're going to go over. But I say the creator of Newell Strength because I don't really do much coaching over there anymore. And and that's a great thing because I've had I have uh Mike, Coach Mike, Coach Dana, phenomenal people, phenomenal coaches. I would say they're world world class. And they probably know more than me now about uh training and, and coaching. And when I first started, it was it was just me, right? I wanted to be the best strength coach in the world. And then your mission changes as you're trying to help other people create their dream lives and, and inspiring people. So the mission of Newell Strength is to inspire people to transform their lives. And that's not just for the clients. That's for my team. These are for, for my family members, anybody. That's that's really been my mission. My personal mission in life has been to inspire people through my words and actions. So that's why I like to write. That's why I like to do the podcast and put out as much content as possible and really, you know, spark something in other people to say, hey, I can do that too. So what I want to talk about today is how history is only going to remember the bold. History will forget you if you don't act with boldness in this lifetime. Now, mindset is one of my favorite things to study. I love the neuroscience, okay, which is your brain set and your mindset, which is more of an outlook on life and a mentality from as young as I can remember, I've always had a uh, a slant towards being very optimistic, maybe overly optimistic at times. I've told this story before, but when I was in high school, I was really big into basketball. So I started studying any advantage I can get. I was a very good athlete, but I didn't have off the charts physical attributes. Six foot, six foot one. Going into my senior year of high school, I was 208 pounds. I remember that because that's when I really got into lifting. And, uh, when I could jump pretty good, I was I had a really good first step. I was quick, but I wasn't six five. Uh, you know, I wasn't doing three sixty dunks, nothing like that, right? So I said, okay, I got to get any advantage I can get. So then I started. I would go to the library and I'd take out books on on sports psychology. And Dr. Dennis uh, Waitley had a book. I don't remember the name of the book, but I remember pulling it out from the library, and it was about um, it was about the mindset of an athlete. Okay, and he talked about this this study he did with uh, Olympic downhill skiers and they hooked electrodes up to these people and said, okay, I want you to close your eyes and picture yourself going down the hill, picture all the turns and the, and the speed and, and the, everything you're going to encounter. And their nervous system and their brain reacted the exact same way as if they were actually doing it. And they tested it when they did it also. So it could not tell the difference. So then I said, wait a minute. I can constantly improve with whatever I'm doing before bed, during downtime, during the day. I can close my eyes and visualize what what I'm trying to accomplish. So at basketball, I would have a nightly session. So first of all, you need action also. You can't just visualize. So too many mistakes that people made with the book, The Secret, was that they think they can just imagine something and picture it and then it happens. It has to be followed up with massive action. And it goes back and forth. One feeds the other. Action leads to confidence. Okay. But visualizing it and picturing it makes you more confident, makes you want to do it, and it makes you constantly focus on it. So then you do it more. So it's a, it's a back and forth cycle. So anyhow, I would do 500 jump shots a day, and I still have those charts at my parents' house. And I would do 25 at a time, and I would mark off how many I would make. I had the percentages. You know, I used to actually also hire one of the neighborhood boys who was younger than me to rebound. I'd pay him one or two bucks for a rebounding session. <laughs> And he, he would get the ball and pass it back to me. In many days, it was just me, though. I had all the different areas of the court, different types of shots, runners that I would do. 500 a day, though. Then at night, what I would do is I would practice 
closing my eyes and hitting shots from all over the court. Now, I always knew that there would be a, a, a spot on the court and a spot on the team for somebody that could shoot the ball and not miss. And again, this is really before I got into to the heavy lifting. So I didn't have that. I couldn't really overpower people yet with my body. So shooting was going to be my game. And man, this paid off tremendously. I remember I was doing this for, let's say, a year. And then I played my buddy, George, who was, George was a, a Egyptian dude, still very good friends. He's jacked, very athletic, one of the better basketball players in the high school. And going into my junior year, we both happened to be at the YMCA one night. He said, let's play one-on-one. Now, George was like a, I don't want to say a street ball legend, but people, you know, feared him when it came to basketball, highly respected him. I said, okay, I'll play you. And George was all over me playing defense, right? It's a very muscular, very athletic. And he would have his hand right in my face and I was draining shots. I didn't even, I couldn't even see the basket and I was, I was hitting nothing but the net and he, he just couldn't compete with me. I beat him about three games in a row. And I think he was shocked. He couldn't believe it. But it didn't, I didn't even have to see the, the basket. And I was swishing these. And it came down to my practice, my massive action taking, and my visualization. So the stuff works. Anyhow, I come across so many people that want to have dreams in life. And yet they don't take action. You might be one of those people. You might be listening to this saying, oh, I, want, I wish I could do this. I wish that, you know, I was able to go down this path. But... I'm not. I'm stuck doing such and such because that's just how life is and I'll just deal with it. You have one life to live that we know of. Maybe you come back in a different form. I don't know. Nobody knows that for sure. But you have one life to live. This is not a practice round. If there's something that your heart is telling you you have to do, if there's something that you know, if you don't do it, you're going to regret it forever, then begin. All you have to do is simply begin. The hardest part is getting started. There is a genius in boldness. I don't remember who said that, but there's a genius in in being bold and taking action. And one of my faults, but also one of my greatest strengths, is that I take fast and furious massive action with ideas that I get. Many times before I even relay these to my team members at Newell Strength or Devin, like when we decided to, to go forward with location number two in Flemington, New Jersey, which opens up this January. When I got home from the team meeting, because some of the team members were a little upset that I hadn't told them about this, they found out on Facebook that week. I said, you know what? Uh, I don't even think my parents know. So I came home. My parents happened to be over watching the boys because me and Devin were getting uh, stretch therapy sessions from Coach Dana. And I came home. I said, Mom, did did you know we were opening uh, the second gym? She said, no, but I heard about it. Uh, One of your brothers told me. So that's what you can't. And sometimes people get upset because I don't communicate stuff to them. It's because I'm taking such fast action, right? And I've always said I'm not anywhere near the smartest person in the room. I keep my mouth shut and I listen and I try to learn. In high school, I got it. And this is when it was out of 1600. First time on the SATs, I didn't even break a thousand. Did not even break a thousand. When you compare that to my brothers, my three brothers, they all got above, let's say, 1360, 13s, 14s. One of them might even broke 1500. So that was not my thing, right? But taking action has always given me the advantage. What's up, Unlocking Your Inner Strength listeners? How would you like to know about the three types of days that you can use to maintain a healthy balance while still striving to be the best in the world at what you do? I have good news for you. I've put together a special report showing you exactly how to do this. It's normally $45, but since you're a loyal listener to the show, you can get it for only $10 at unlockingyourinnerstrength.com forward slash time. I don't want to hear that you don't have time to do this, to take that step forward to whatever it is you want to do. I don't want to hear that you're too busy or that you got a mortgage and you got kids. I don't want to hear any of that bullshit. They're all excuses. If you want to make something happen, you can. When I was still teaching, I would get up an hour before I had to start training people so I could study Strength and conditioning and nutrition. Usually, I'm in at 4 or 4.30 a.m. I would get up, train people. I would teach all day, come home, study some more, then go to bed and repeat. I was going to make it happen no matter what. No matter what. Right? I was married and had a mortgage when I resigned from teaching. Was I scared? Yes, I was scared. But I went back to my mindset work. 
And I realized that even if I failed, which in my mind usually is not even uh, a possibility. I have the thought, but usually I work through it until it's not a possibility. Because failure is just learning. So it's how you reframe it. But even if I failed, I knew I wasn't going to sit in the corner and starve to death. I, I knew that I would still be in the game. I'd still be alive. I'd still have my faculties and my, my skill set. If I had to, I could go back to teaching. Or I could work an overnight job until I made ends meet. But I knew that I wouldn't fail. Or that I, even if I did fail, quote unquote, the fear that I was feeling was really not real. It was an illusion. Fear is false evidence appearing real. The thing that we fear is in the future. Think about that. The thing that we fear is in the future. So what you fear the most literally does not exist. It is just a figment of your imagination. How crazy is that? That what you fear is, is fake. Fake news. But what you fear, it really does, never even happens. So history is only going to remember you when you or act boldly and say, I'm going to leave my stamp on this earth. You don't know how many days you have left. Stop waiting for, the t for all the lights to be green. They're never going to be all green. Stop trying to be perfect and, and wait till everything's perfect. Perfectionism is just really, it's, a, it's a way, another way that fear disguises itself and comes forward. Because people that are trying to be perfect and perfectionist, I got to write the perfect blog before I post it. I got to wait until this is perfect before I do it. That is just fear of judgment. In fear of criticism. Now, I have a recurring thought the past week or two when I've been training, and if you haven't been reading along with my stuff, I have made a decision, and I'll be talking about this in the next episode, to compete next summer in a Brazilian jiu-jitsu tournament. And I've never done anything like that in my life. I've never done BJJ in my life, right? But I started changing my training already to mimic the energy systems that I need. And the training is very intense. This morning when I'm doing my hill sprints down the street, you know, and doing push-ups in between and kettlebell swings, man, my lungs were on fire. And one of the recurring thoughts I have is fast forward to that tournament and I tap out because I'm too tired. And then Braxton goes, mommy, why'd we, why did it stop? What happened? And she looks at him and says, well, daddy was too tired. And I don't care how tired I get in my training. That pushes me to... I don't care. I don't, I'll black out before I stop. And the reason I'm telling you that is you're going to have somebody in your life one day, and this was always a driving factor for me, that you're going to try to inspire. You're going to try to give a kind word to, an inspiring or motivating word, where you want, uh, you say, go for it. You can do it. And I always picture in my head before we had kids, if I said that, even when I was teaching, and then they look at me and say, well, why should I listen to you? You didn't do it. You just lived a mediocre life. You were average just like everybody else. And that should be enough to fuel you. You have people looking up to you. Stop being a pansy, figure out a plan, and simply begin. Don't worry about how it's going to finish or what the final product is going to be. Simply begin. That's what I got for you this week. Hopefully that sparks something in you. Uh, as you can tell, I'm a little fired up with that. That's something I'm very passionate about. Please leave a review on iTunes if you haven't already done so. And please share these episodes with somebody that you think can use a, a, an inspiring word or some kind of uh, knowledge that I'm trying to share with you. And, and it's all about spreading the word and helping people, uh, inspiring people to transform their lives. And develop, you know, before I forget, develop your own mission statement for life. Eight words or less. Eight words or less. That's all I got for you. I'll be back next week with episode number 62. Peace. You've been listening to The Inner Strength Show. If you enjoyed the show, remember to subscribe, rate, and review us in iTunes.